Good afternoon, everybody. Fusion Phil here at JitCAD Cam. And this week, we're going to go ahead and dive in with our Fusion Friday video on how to use multi axis contour for the floors of our park. Now, we did do a video a few weeks ago, and we did that for the walls of our park. So feel free to go check out that video. And let's dive into this. So before I actually go into creating my tool pass and everything, I'm going to show you guys a little trick that may help you, and you may or may not know about this. This is mainly a visual thing is I'm gonna go ahead and create an offset surface on the bottom floors of both of these pockets. Now you're gonna see why here when I go ahead and expand out and get rid of my part. As you're seeing, these floors are not flat. They are very twisty, turny, twisted in different directions. And as you can see, this is much easier for me to see without my part in the way. As you could do a section analysis, we see that quite a bit. Now, in this case, I like this for demonstrating to somebody or showing them what the tool path is for. You do not need to do this step. So let's go ahead and kick our part back on and let's jump over to our manufacturer workspace. So the first thing I always need to do, as you guys are familiar with, is we need to create our setup. From our setup, we're gonna go ahead and define what we're machining, which is gonna be that part. And for the demonstration here today, we're actually just gonna say the part is also the solid. Now, I'm not gonna spend time roughing this out. If you guys wanna see me work through a part start to finish, feel free to leave a comment down below and I would be more than happy to create that content. Now, let's dive into our multi-axis tool path. So we're gonna go to our multi-axis tab, multi-axis finishing, and the first thing, like all tool paths inside of Fusion, we're gonna go ahead and select our tool. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a tool from scratch. So if you didn't catch last week's video and you didn't know this, or maybe you're starting to see this inside of your Fusion, is we do have some new cutters being defined inside of Fusion, Autodesk Fusion, Fusion 360 for those old folks like myself. And what you're seeing here is everything from a barrel cutter to your lens, your ovals, and your tapers, right? These are cutters that are not flat, right? They all have curvatures and some weird profiles to them, but they do allow things like the ability to finish much faster, much cleaner, and get into different areas of the part. What I'm actually gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and do the lens cutter. Now, in order to be able to do stuff and be able to set this up, you need the manufacturing extension, or as I'm used to saying, the machining extension, right? Now feel free, go up to the top corner of your Fusion and start a free trial of that actual manufacturing extension, giving you full access to all of this stuff. Now, if you're ready to purchase or you're looking to purchase, feel free to reach out to me directly at JetCAD Cam, as I'd be more than happy to sell you the machining, your, not machining, manufacturing extension and support this channel to keep this content coming. Now, from here, as always, Autodesk does a really good job on making it simple to define your tools and giving you a complete reference of what you're changing and where you're changing it. But for the sake of this part, we're gonna go ahead and just leave this all default at the end of the day. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and jump from here. We're gonna go ahead and hit accept. We're gonna go back to our actual part and we're gonna jump to our geometry tab. Now, walking through this a little bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt something that I always stress to people and I tell them that you should do this in any way, shape or form, is if you don't know what you're doing, we're gonna go ahead and just hit okay and see what we get, right? So in the case of this part, it's now giving us a warning. And that warning is you did not select surfaces to machine, right? And well, in multi-axis finishing, everything is starting to be driven from surfaces, right? This is kind of a nice thing about this toolpath is we're no longer basing things on a boundary of a sketch or an edge. We're actually defining things based on surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick my two surfaces. And as you can see here, there's my two surfaces I wanted to machine. I am picking these surfaces based on the model. So again, is if you remember, we could actually turn off anything in the background. So we don't have those on by default. I am picking the floor of the model. I'm not picking the surfaces we created. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna hit okay. And we're gonna see what happens right off the start. Now, as you can see, I did get a warning and a little bit of an error message. Step over is too big for the barrel profile. Again, this is something nice of Fusion. And this is something that I'm not gonna say, but I've used plenty of softwares that don't tell you what's wrong. They only tell you that there's a problem. Fusion does both, right? There's a problem and your solution is, is you cannot take that size step over. So like all tool paths, we jump over to the fourth tab. We go ahead and change our step over. I'm just gonna cut it in half and see what I get. And now as you're seeing here is we do have our full multi-axis finishing strategy. Now what you're gonna notice is this is very familiar looking, right? This looks a lot like, if you can guess it, a scallop tool path. And that's because for the most part, 
it is at the end of the day, right? So we've seen this scallop toolpath branch out in different areas and do different things, right? Like I used to love scallop for finishing molds out. Then that jumped over to the steep and shallow because now I get scallop plus contour. And then you start jumping into things like geodesic, which we're going to see why all these toolpaths are so important and the control you're going to start to see and get across here, right? So if you haven't used geodesic yet, it does something called being able to utilize surfaces and guide curves. Again, as you're seeing here in multi-axis finishing, we could actually give something like this part guide curves. And what you're gonna see is based on each boundary, I'm gonna go ahead and actually define a couple of curves here, right? So I want that curve, and then I'm gonna use this curve. And again, we can go ahead and hit okay. And now what you're gonna see is the strategy is gonna change, right? So again, as that toolpath is trying to follow the curve, and is kind of starting to generate what would be considered a parallel toolpath. Again, we are starting to utilize the strategy to do different things, and we're being able to do that by doing nothing more than giving it a set of curves and surfaces to work off of. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control z to undo that, because another really neat feature here is if we go over to our Passes tab, you're going to notice we have the traditional, same as Scallop, right? Climb conventional in both ways. And now we can kick on spiral. And what spiral is going to do now is it is going to spiral continuously stepping over as it gets further and further out of this part. Again, allowing us to create one continuous toolpath, adjust that, add guide curves as possible to change the way this toolpath is going to interact with the part. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and do that trick real quick. We're going to go ahead and kick off our part and kick on those surfaces. As you guys can see in real time now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit simulate. Now keep in mind, we're gonna go ahead and do a tail. And I'm gonna do a viewpoint from the tool because I think it's gonna show this much better. For a lot of you out there, you're probably using machine sim. This is just to demonstrate what this tool is doing as it's constantly using that lens area of the tool with a little bit of tilt and it's constantly machining, right? Now, what is the value of a lens cutter over, say, a ball end mill? Now, some of you are going to know this, and some of you aren't. And the idea is, is the size of this radius on the tip of the tool is so much larger than you could ever fit a ball end mill inside of this pocket, right? So my surface on the floor of this part is going to be night and day difference. Now, I may be in hunting of a better surface finish, or a faster toolpath time. And that's where the lens cutter will actually give me both, right? Because I don't have a two inch ball end mill down in a pocket that doesn't fit. I have this nice small profile tool that's getting all the way back in my corners as you guys were starting to see there. But it's also giving me that surface finish based on scallop height that is night and day difference for a finish at the bottom. Again, we may have to adjust a few more settings and all that, and we're gonna let this run through. And again, we have that full five axis tilting. And you can see I'm doing almost minimal things on this toolpath. And I'm getting extremely well built out design. Well, not design, but a well built out toolpath that basically is going to function as it was intended to do. So I'm going to go ahead and exit simulation. Again, as you guys see, we can play around with this a little more. You do have some additional settings here, as most of you may know. We can go into our multi-axis tab like we did last week, change to lead and contact, change our contact point, what percentage of the tool is actually engaging. Again, we adjusted a lot of this at the end of the day when we were doing our tool settings last week. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over out of this because I'm gonna take this exact same tool path that you see here. We're gonna make a couple modifications. Again, very simple stuff. We're gonna go ahead and go to our passes tab. I'm gonna turn off spiral. And as you're going to see here, we're going to get back to our original strategy, right? And I'm going to copy this entire setup. Now, again, this is something that I, I love inside of Fusion 360 is because the collision detection, knowing where the tool is, knowing where the part is, detecting your shaft and holder, it allows you to kind of take one strategy and get it refined to the point where you could turn it into a template. In my case, I'm not going to turn it into a template, but as you're seeing me do here, I'm copy and pasting that entire setup from one part over to another part. And then from there, we're going to look at that multi-axis strategy again. We're going to define some floors, right? So I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick my floors all over again. And as you're going to see here within a couple of quick seconds, we're going to get that strategy once again. 
Same kind of concept. The floor of this part is a little funky where we actually have curvature to the floor. Again, that's matching the structural kind of po component. But we're also getting something else, right? So I just pick the floor. It's automatically detecting where the part is because we're model aware. And one thing that's really neat is it's even recognizing that this is an open pocket. So, you know, I picked that floor and you would think it was chasing the edge, but because the model does not actually connect over here, if you guys see that, we're actually machining down this edge with our final couple of passes, allowing us to make that open pocket and make that floor as pretty as possible. So as you can see, this is one thing that I love. It's great inside of Fusion to be able to see great tool paths like this start to come out more and more. And with those tool paths, how easy they are to implement. I would love for you guys to go out and try this and any problems you have with it, feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment down below on what you found in little tips and tricks on making this tool path more successful and easier to use for all of you.